Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Obiyama. I talk about all things faith, fun, fashion, you name it. We have those conversations. This is a teaching video, so you know I like to get deep. I like to break down the word, but this is not gonna get too deep because we're maturing, right? So um, meat is for the mature, right? That's what Hebrews talks about. We can't be out here drinking the tete of the word. We need the depth, we need the reality so that when the enemy comes, like a flood, we can raise a standard because we have a foundation in Jesus Christ. What is that foundation? Specifically, I wanna talk about the timing of God. Now on a personal level, I miss God's timing sometimes. I know like they tell us, you know, a lot of script, a lot of, um, a lot of ministers erroneously talk about how you can't miss God's timing. You can't miss the, yeah, you can. Yes, you can. Well, why? Because you have free will. And because you have free will, why did, if you can't miss God's timing, right? Why did Jesus tell the Pharisees uh, or even the, the, the children of Israel as he was ministering to them, why did he tell them, you, you know, you know when the wind blows that it's gonna rain, something along those lines, but you can't tell the time of, uh, or this hour or the season that you're in. Paraphrasing, I'll put the actual verse maybe somewhere here. Because there's an opportunity, there's, there's a potential for you to misunderstand and miss opportunities and, and situations that God has destined for your blessing or your breakthrough because you don't have the discernment required. Now, I want to talk biblically about what time is according to God's creation and plan for this thing we know as time. And I'm going to bring some science into it. Time is a fourth dimensional word, right? Time is the passing of matter through a continuum we know as space, right? Matter passing through space is known as time. That's what science calls it. That's what makes it 4D, right? Matter we know is 3D. We exist in a three dimensional plane. And as we pass across the, the fourth dimension, we are encroaching through time. God is outside of that, right? God is not old and he's not young. He has always been. And so he created time to govern us. Time was created so that you and I could mess up on this side of reality, still be saved and then spend eternity with God. Do you know why the angels that fell from heaven, right? When Lucifer fell from heaven, do you know why that they can't just ask God to forgive them and be saved? Because they did that in the eternity. Time is created so that you and I can get our character right by making the choices that would cultivate our soul to interpret rightly what the spirit is saying so that we can spend eternity with Jesus Christ, Abba Father and Holy Spirit indwelling. So time is for our benefit, but time requires discernment. Now scripture talks about two types of time. There's chronos and there's kairos. Chronos, we get, you know, you know the word chronological, right? Chronological means in order. One, then two, then three, then four, then five. Right, that's chronos time. Now there's kairos time. Kairos time is the thing that people like to get tattooed on them or write scriptures about, but no one really gives you an in-depth understanding because very few people understand what kairos refers to, right? Kairos refers to an opportune time. Kairos refers to the, 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 the head of a thing. It's the manifestation, the, the, the point of the pimple popping. It is that specific moment where the thing happens. That is what Kairos it refers to. That is the, the part of time that Kairos captures. I have scripture for you. Let's go to Mark, if you have your Bible, and I hope you do. Um, and I promise I won't be super long in this video. Um, let's go to Mark 1, verse 14 through 15. It said, after John was arrested, Jesus went to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. Interesting. So after John was arrested is when Jesus says the time is fulfilled. And the word time in that scripture is kairos. The opportune moment has come. Why? Because kairos is not just about a chronological event occurring. It wasn't just that, you know, he wanted to announce that the kingdom of God comes. Kairos requires discernment. Understanding the kairos moments of God requires discernment precision and a ability to judge well, right? Discernment is judgment, um, but just because you have discernment doesn't mean that you judge well. You can just discern a thing, but not have language or um, associations for what you're discerning. And so Kairos requires that you and I be able to look at the things that are coming to a head and say, this is the opportune time. This is what this means. There's an interpretation required for Kairos that is not required for Kronos. 
timing. Chronos timing is just one, two, three, four. You're just, okay, I'm getting older. I'm turning 21, I'm turning 22. Like, you don't need to interpret what that means. You're just getting older, right? But when it comes to what is the opportune moment for something to happen? What is the opportune moment for me to get married? What is the opportune moment for me to leave the state? What is the opportune moment for me to launch out a ministry? What is the opportune moment for me to start a business? It requires an understanding of Kairos because you need to be able to look at the season that you're in, look at the events that are coming into play in that season, and say, now, now is the moment, now is the time. This is when if I do this thing, the hand of God will be all over it. The doors are open, the heavens are, ah, and I am in the place and I'm in alignment with what God wants me to do. So going back to Mark 1 verses 14 through 15, where it says, after John was arrested, why did John need to be arrested for Jesus to declare that the kingdom of God is upon us? Well, didn't Jesus spend all that time talking about John being the greatest but in this new kingdom that he was coming into, right? John would be the least. So maybe, and I postulate this, the arresting of John, Jesus knew that John was going to die. The arresting and the death of John signified the end of an old regime. Jesus had to be able to discern, okay, John is arrested. John is gonna die. My father in heaven is using John as a sign that the old thing is done and it's time for me to announce the kingdom. It's time for me to tell people that that old way, the law that they had to follow, the repentance of uh, from dead works in, in that sense of it, right? That, that following of the 666 laws of the Torah, like that thing has come to pass. It's been fulfilled. John is dead. He's the last one that was sent to fulfill that thing. I am the one. I am the greater that John has spoken about, and I have come to usher in a new kingdom, right? I have come to bring forth what God has called to manifest, which is his kingdom on this earth. And so it also required Jesus understanding that things had to be done before that, right? What other things had to be done? Before John's arrest, Jesus had to be baptized, didn't he, right? Before John's arrest, um, Jesus had to encounter the experience in the wilderness where he was tempted by the enemy. There were so many things that came into play before John's arrest that Jesus had to then put together, discern well, and say, yes, now that he's arrested, everything else has been fulfilled, the kingdom of God is upon us. And so you and I have to be able to do the same. Your life is not a happenstance. You need to derive meaning from every activity. Every chronos moment in your life is not accidental. The things that God allows, the people that God allows, the situations that manifest, your reaction to those situations, the outcome of those situations, all of those are going to empower you to be in the proper place, the proper position, and in the proper moment for what God wants to do in his kairos timing. Right? Your job is just to prepare for Kairos and then recognize it when it happens. But in order to recognize it, you need to be so in tune with the frequency of heaven that you cannot miss it. And so, yes, it is very possible to miss the timing of God. But my prayer for you is that through discernment and by the grace of the Holy Spirit, you will not. You will be the one that takes the opportune timing of God. If it's time to start that business, right? Just some hints. If it's time to start that business, God would have prepared you to own a business. You would, have been ha you, you would either have to steward well someone else's business right? Or been put in opportunities to steward someone else's business. Um, two, you have been in contact with whoever is supposed to help you with those businesses, whoever they are, wherever they are. Three, you know, God would give you the desire to start a business. You're not just going to be like, oh, I want to start a, like God is going to plant that desire and then grow that desire in you. Those are all signs of the times. And then how do you know the Kairos moment for starting that business has come? Maybe one day you get, you know, information about getting a business loan. Maybe one day you meet an investor. Maybe one day you meet a businesswoman that's doing exactly what you want to do. And you're like, my gosh, she needs to tutor me. She needs to mentor me. At that moment is your Cairo season to start. So, but it requires a sermon. It requires us to really think, right? Like not just exist in this human body, but to pa not just pass in time, but to really think about what is God doing at every opportune moment? And how does that lead to his greatest desire, which is his will being fulfilled in my life, however that looks. I pray this video blessed you. I pray that it taught you something. And if it illuminated your understanding, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel, share the video with a friend, and I will see you next time. Bye, guys.